receivers and things do. There's a couple of things that are different on this one. Um, basically, there's one thing I found that doesn't work, but we'll, I've, I'll show you the workaround for it. Okay, so very basics. This dial, it's got the numbers on it, but I've never used the numbers. It's all, you do it all by feel and by mm -hmm. ear. But that moves the cutter in and out mm -hmm. to the wheel. So as you're grinding, you're going to grind a little bit, then you're going to move it a little closer, you're going to grind it again. Okay? This knob here controls the forward stop. So if you were, if you were grinding something where you wanted to, to go to a certain point and then stop, and not, you know, not grinding any further. Maybe it's a parallel cutter you were mm -hmm. doing, which we don't do very often, but you could set that so that it wouldn't go any farther past that point, okay? This lever here sets that on that, on that bar so you can move it in and out, you know, to wherever you need to line up to. And also, it's a little... You have to grease it. Yeah, it needs a little bit. You also can set the, the, the rest position wherever you want the down to be if you just turn that. So you get the clearance if you're measuring or you're doing whatever. You've got a little bit of room to get away. Okay. This one sets. There's a bit of an offset angle this way, which we don't normally ever change. So you just want to keep that one locked. So was that, is that the 7 degrees? Uh, no, it's actually 20. It's 20? A, it's, they call it the rake angle. The rake angle, yeah. gotcha, okay. Okay, this lever here sets the angle that you're, you're grinding to. Okay, so you could have it be a 45 degree bevel or a 40 degree bevel. Now, the way it's supposed to work, you can see if you get right in here. I don't know if you can see it or not. Mm -hmm. See this scale on here? Yep. Okay, and then on this piece, I'll move it here so you can see it. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a, a zero mark. Mm -hmm. Okay, the way these are supposed to work is that scale is supposed to be fixed, and this is supposed to slide, so that number slides around to the angle you use. But for some reason, this one, whether it's broken or, or what have you, but for this one, they both slide together. So you have to, when you're setting your angle, you have to kind of push this all the way over till it stops, which should be zero, and then you can move that to whatever angle you're doing. And which normally, normally thirty, right? No, for plastic we normally do twenty-five. Twenty-five? Yeah. Okay. Now you guys are going to want to experiment a little bit because everyone is every grinder is different. Uh -huh. So, the first couple of cutters, what I would do is put them in, and then set the angle up to match. What you're, what you're getting. But the, the main ones are, we do, the, the bevelers, we actually do at 40 degrees, because yeah. with the rake angle, it works out to be about 45. Um, standard cutters are typically 25, profiles are 15. Yeah. Okay? So once you've got that at the angle you want, you can just lock her in there. Okay? For setting the cutter, there's a couple of things that you have to do. Um, and the first part I'm just going to show you, because if it ever gets changed, you're going to need to fix it. But once it's set, you typically don't have to change it. Okay. So what you're going to do, this little knob here controls how that cam turns. You can hear okay. right now it's there's two hard stops 180 degrees apart. If we move that to the middle position, that locks it firm. Okay. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to turn this, and you'll see when, as you turn it, you'll see in what that used to be a window, you'll see that red dot appear in the window. Yep. Okay, so if you lock it in there, that reads your clearance angle. Okay? So the clearance angle is basically, see how when we, when quarters don't show it as well, but see how that's, this one, it's round, 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 and then it's like it's got a flat side oh. on it? Okay. That clearance angle is the angle between the face and that okay. essentially flat yeah. facet. Okay. Okay? The steeper the clearance angle, the better it's going to cut soft materials, but the weaker it's going to be because the less material yeah, is backing weird. up the tip. So if you were going to change that, it would be for like a cutter for stainless. You would make that angle 
Um, what do we got it at right now? I got it at 20 right now. I got it at 30 right now. Um, stainless will go down to 20. Okay. Um, for some plastic cutters like profiles, we don't because they're so uh, fragile already. But like sometimes bevelers and that will crank it up to 40 and get like a knife edge on there. And it tends to clean out a little better, I find. But So when you mm -hmm. set it, mm -hmm. you set this first and then go to the red dot? No, no, no. Or? You go to the red dot. You lock it in at the okay, red so dot. And then set and it And then you, you can, want. yeah. Okay. And it's, this wheel locks it. Okay. So you quarter so, it. So, yeah. So you, anyways, you unlock it. And then you just turn it to wherever you want it to be. And then you crank it back down again. And then you put that back to... Now, there. I notice inside here there's a hole on this side and a yes. hole on this side. Does it matter this, which side? Yes, it does. This side okay. is freewheel. Okay. So it'll just spin and spin and spin. This side is that 180 degree. So, and, so when it's and, set for 30 yeah, and done. And why that's important to have that 180 degree is so that when it comes around, it stops, stops. at that clearance angle and gives you that flat okay. knife edge. Okay, so almost done. I think so. It's working. Right, so okay. I'm just gonna... I don't know why this is not sitting flat either. Oh, there we go. Trust a carpenter. You got it. Okay, so when you're loading a cutter. You can either go from the top or from the bottom. And what you want to do is you want to start with it at zero. Okay. So we're zeroing out the cutter. And then you can use, this is just the gauge. You put this up flat against the face. Okay. With the 1164 ths especially this one seems to be a little worn and it's yeah. a little big, you can have a little bit of wobble. So you want to be careful when you're tightening it, and this tightens it, that when we tighten it up, you can see it move over, mm -hmm. that we kind of give it a wiggle every quarter turn or so, just so we can make sure that when we do it, we're centered. Because if it's pushed over to one side or the other, it's going to affect how the tip works out, right? Sometimes you'll end up with a cutter where the, the, the tip is supposed to be like this, right? There's mm -hmm. the face, and it's actually ground kind of like that or kind of like that. And you'll see what the, the way it'll show up on the cutter is as you come around, it'll actually be ground on the front side mm -hmm. a little bit because, and that's what that is, is that the tip is not perfectly centered in that, in that okay. collet. Okay. So again, 1164ths are the worst and new collets are the worst or even worse, or sorry, old collets are even worse than that because they're so sloppy anyway. It's the same as putting a drill bit inside a drill. Make sure it's centered. Yeah. If not, it's yeah. going to be all over the place. That's right. So then you just snug it up. Turn the machine on, and now we can get it close. And this one, I don't like that bar sticking out that far because it actually hits. So we might have to have a little more cutter sticking out to make this work. We'll see if we can get close. Okay, so I want to set it up. So when you move this, it moves this in. It allows this to move farther wow, up. Okay. So what we want to do, if you come around and see here, the edge that we're grinding, mm -hmm. we want that to be able to go just past the edge of the wheel. Okay? Because okay? if you're always grinding on one spot on the wheel, pretty soon your wheel's not flying anymore. Okay, so we want to have it go past. And then to, to do the actual sharpening, we just move back and forth. Okay. Don't try to take too much at a time or it'll heat the cutter up. Okay. And I just kind of alternate when I'm doing, when I'm moving the wheel in, I do the what they call a slicing move. And I just move it back and forth across the whole face of the wheel because I'm taking a fair bit of material. So I want to make sure that I'm evenly wearing that wheel. Okay. And then you can look at it and see 
the angle that we were using and the angle that we're on there were not exactly the same. So I've got to take a little bit more down. And like I say, I've set it for the angles that we normally use, but every grinder is a little different. So you guys will want to do a couple of cutters, make sure they cut nice, and then make a note of what your settings are. Okay. So now we've got that cutting edges all the way. We don't have any... I mean, we got a little bit of a leftover piece there, but nobody's going that deep with the cutter anyway, so we're just wasting our time in their cutter. And then you just kind of rock it back and forth slowly until it's not taking any more material. Now, should we move it while we're rocking it, or it doesn't really... It doesn't really matter. I normally don't, because, again, if your wheel is out of level, a li or out of true a little bit, then if you move it, like you'll hear, there I'm taking something, here I'm taking nothing, right? So when I'm doing that final, that final piece, I try not to move it too much, and I also try, if I remember, to do it on the highest part of the wheel, just because I want to eventually get that back down to true again. So when we're done, we take it out. There are settings to change this over to do the tipping properly. Nobody actually does that. Actually, you can see, mm -hmm. see that flat spot on the edge mm -hmm. there. So this, something is not true either. The cutter's not loading in the call it true or I had it at a bit of an angle, but that's what, what it does. This, we should be able to get that right down to a sharp point. So you'll have to experiment a little bit maybe. It looks like it's centered this way. It just wasn't centered this way. But anyways, so for tipping, I learned this from Fred. Seven degrees down, seven degrees back, which doesn't mean anything to me. So what you do is you brace your hands on the unit, mm -hmm. and you want it just kind of like that. A little bit back of center, and a little bit down. And it's really not critical to tipping. I've never really had any issue with the angles that we use on the tips. Nobody's ever complained that it didn't cut good because it was 8 degrees instead of 7 degrees or whatever. So then you can go to here and whatever size cutter you're trying to grind, so say we want to do to a 30 thou, we just center that in, the, in there and then we just literally hold the cutter up against the line and we want the tip size to be the same width as the line. And normally you wouldn't have that extra little piece yeah. on there that's, that's showing you. Okay? And that's it. So how do you think we can get, get it so that it, it goes all the way around then? Well, do we have another cut of the tray? Do we have a... Uh, what was that? I didn't hear. I didn't, I didn't catch hear. it either. You just have the one call it, right? Yeah, we were going to order that other one, remember? Okay. So. Let's, I think this is going to be the same as the ones... Yeah, these are the same as what we have, and these are the same as the, uh, the Chinese machines. Yeah. So what I'll do is I'll order you guys a set okay. of new ones. Could also be that it's filthy dirty. How would you clean them? Just with um, solvent. Just okay. dip it in some solvent and then run a like a, Call a cutter through, or just push a cloth through with a you know something small. The other thing I noticed with this one is it's usually the the very end mm. will tighten down and it, you won't see a gap. And this one there's a significant gap, so there's a lot of wear in this collar, and uh, we might be. And you can see yeah there's a lot of that's, a lot of play if you feel that the cutter is actually almost snug in there you can feel there's mm -hmm. there's not a lot of room back here it's just a but tip there's of a it. ton of room up front yeah it's actually yeah no, it's snug yeah yeah that's yeah, almost like someone's like, well it's 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 from yeah. just being used a lot 
This is old, 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 old. But it's a standard one that uh, that we can get. So we'll get a set. Because you need a quarter. I mean, probably most of what you guys are going to be grinding is quarters anyway. Yeah, or 11s. Well, a lot of guys use 11. Oh, 11s. 11, 11, 11, 11, 11, yeah. We do, yeah. Well, we we have a lot of customers that use 1164s, but the guys that use quarters do heavier work, yes. so they grind them more often, yeah, and they'll usually times. send you like 20 at a time. Yeah. So quarters are... 20? <laughs> oh. I only have two 30s. Here's one sharp and yeah. send it back. Oh, well, we've had twice since Christmas, or... I mean, it came in before Christmas, but since Christmas, twice we've had orders of over a hundred cutters to sharpen wow. at a time. Yeah. So we, I think we would get more if we did it in house. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you definitely would. Yeah, we would. Because yeah. as soon as we tell customers, we send them out. Now, yeah. or we send. Them. Even when you do do them in house, one of the big mistakes that you want to avoid is you don't want people to necessarily think that if they just come in and give you a cutter. That you're going to drop everything. You no, know exactly. You want to try to save them. Two, yeah. three days. Yeah. yeah. Well, or, or you like, you know, come back in an hour or whatever, yeah. right? Because yeah. you don't want to drop everything to do it. So everybody always does have those one or two customers that are like, oh, can I just get this one sharpened while I'm picking up my plastic? When you get good at this, it'll take you about two minutes. Make them wait 10. Because yeah. otherwise, tomorrow they're going to come back because it only takes you two minutes, right? They'll come back tomorrow with one, and the next day with one, and the next day with one. And it's it's kind of a pain in the ass. You missed it, Michael. You don't get the sharpen cutters anymore. Hmm. <laughs> Mike's got it all on tape, so yeah, he, can, he can teach that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I wouldn't, um, until we get you guys the new collets, I wouldn't actually tell anybody that you're doing no. it yet. But well, we haven't. But we can practice. Practice and, you know, do one and see how it cuts on yep. the machine and... So right now everything's this is set. Weird. It also doesn't want to go in there. Yeah, it's it's pretty much set, set. up. The only it. thing we need to do if we want to change thing is change the angle. We yeah. want to do like a twenty or a twenty-five or yeah, a yeah. ten or whatever. Yeah, that's this angle here usually, because you'll have yes, sorry, stainless yes. profile yeah. and then the ninety-nine percent yes, of all the other cutters. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking of stealing the one that I bought for Calgary because it's got more markings on it than mine. Plus, mine's old. What happens? Do we have is, one here? No, no you no. don't. We need to get What'll one. eventually happen is all the small ones will get scratched. Will get really scratched up. So but you can buy new uh, new back plates for it. Well, you guys can make a new back plate. Well, but yeah, you can could. also just take these screws off and turn it. Yeah, well, that's what it degrees. says in the manual. But yeah. Just to turn it if you want. We need to buy Who's one. This? That's yours. Oh, okay. So we do have one. No. Yeah. That's yours. That's ours. Yeah. 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 Alan yeah. just brought bought it. He just bought it for us. I said, do we have one here? No, don't, we don't. Don't say. Well, we don't have one, but I mean, don't say we just sell and bought it. For you. I never say. I would never say that. <laughs> but a front awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So that's that's really it. The the hard part of sharpening cutters is figuring out. Okay, Thomas, uh, get setting, in there. Get in there. The settings on the new the new grinders. I mean, that's okay, get in there, Thomas, and, and try. Do you have it. another cutter? Or do you well, want to do, do the, the same one again? Do the same one. Just. I mean, eventually what will end up happening is you'll get down to the point where you can't, Yeah. you'll be on the, uh, when you the can't, angle. When you don't have enough of that flat area yeah. on the front to zero it, then you th tell them they throw that yeah. cutter away and buy a new one. You still have a fair bit of, see how much length yeah. you still have there? And as long as you're not taking points and sharpening down to 125s all the time, it really the cutter should last 20 or 30 sharpings if they're not snapping them off. This is kind of an acquired skill because you really need three hands to do this. But. You can't hold that, that gauge against the cutter and then tighten it up because you almost need three hands. Yeah, it? yeah. Yeah, right. So again with 11cc force the trick that I do is just do like an eighth of a turn yeah. or a quarter of a turn, adjust to an eighth of a turn and yeah. adjust. Uh, oh, it's the other, it's yeah, the that, that screwed me up at first, too. There you go. Yep. You can take a little more. If it starts, if the cutter starts changing color, you're going too fast. <laughs> Yeah.
There you go. Yeah, go all the way to the stops. But you want to sort of go in and out with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. There you go. There you go. Rough grinding, go back and forth across the wheel, and then for your for your finish, you want to keep it in one spot. So I would pull it out or pull it back and just take a look and see if you're down to where you want to be. A little bit more, looks like. Yeah, a little bit more. I just want to, uh, I just want to spin it. Yeah, we got a little bit of that. We got a little bit of that round over still, but not as bad as before. So I think that is just to call it centering issue. Okay. That's an any one. That's your finish. Yeah. Would be yeah. one good full yeah. turn just to get out there. Yeah, just back okay. and forth like that until yeah. it stops. Until you, you're not taking any more material. That's it. Yeah. And you theoretically yeah. then have a point right. at Go the end. Right, hard to the stops. So you make sure you're going all the way because it's really important that you're you're going all the way around to the stop. And you want like a solid point at the end. Exactly. Yeah. It should be it should be a perfect point at the end when you get when you get it done. That's pretty good. Now one thing I'm just gonna... Oh, gotta leave yeah. the wheel, go, oh, okay. Yeah, let's just turn that off for now. One thing I just wanna check, because I... See where your zero point is? I'm not sure if it was moving or if it was when you were... Okay, yeah, it was moving. The, um, the cutter wasn't quite solid in there. Okay. So as you were turning, as it was getting that resistance, it was it was spinning on you a little bit. So we want to make sure that that's at zero. Otherwise, your 30 degrees isn't 30 degrees. Okay. But that's how you learn. I mean, that's why they've got the holes in here. So when you over-tighten it by hand, you can wrench it out again. I'll try it again and see what happens. Yeah, see how much... Yeah. of a difference we ended up with so but that's again that's how you learn yeah. you would throw that on the 810 and try to cut something and it would cut like crap because it's almost all the way around you have to bring it but in it probably, probably worked like hot damn on stone yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and somebody wanted to cut stone the other yes. day yeah. there you I've go done it. yeah yeah you yeah. carbide it just take a lot of cutters yeah we had somebody that wanted uh they originally wanted to buy a laser to do it, and then I'm like, well, because they wanted to do the, the paving stone, yes. like the donation thing. Yes. I'm like, it's not going to be deep enough. You yeah. need to sandblast it. Yeah. Oh, well, what if we brought you all the bricks, and you could do it on the machine? I'm like, well, no, 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 no. What if you buy this machine? Exactly. Do it yourself. It, it looks good, but yeah. it just, you know. You get three or four bricks and you got to change covers. Can you put a coolant on it or does it not do anything? Uh, you probably could. I yeah. don't know if it would help much. The abrasive stuff, the coolant doesn't really help that much. Because yeah. what it is, is it's the the, the abrasive residue is just grinding on that cutting. Yeah. Right? It's like sharpening the cutter as yeah. you go. Just go. Nice and fast. If it dwells in one spot, you're going to so get more heat, up the, right? Yeah. There you go. And then just at the just at the end, do that quick round until you don't hear anything. And Bob's your uncle. Yeah, you could, if you wanted to, if you were doing it for real, you could take a little more to get down to that edge. But really, I wouldn't even bother because it's already again, it's already in a part that you're not going to ever use. Yeah. Now you got it. Go all the way to that stop, though. That's it. That's perfect. That'll work. Okay, this, this edge here, 
is the critical one because that controls how it's going to cut the right edge. The right edge. Yep. Yeah. And the left edge is the clearance edge. Exactly. This back side, all you want is that it's nice and smooth so it's not catching any chips as they're trying to get ejected. So like this? Yep. You want to go seven degrees? Yeah, just like that. That's about, you had it, you had it about right, right about there. And every time you touch it like that and you hear it, it's about five pounds. Yeah. So what size is that, is that kit now? Keep spinning it until you get to where it Yeah, well, you can do one too. Yeah, no, do one right now. Get in and do it. Get it's all it. set up and everything. Well, and it just kind of comes out, and the middle isn't taken away, and the yeah. outside is. That's that so tip question, angle that you're seeing. Is there like a, a component here that can do the tipping angle for you? There is, but you don't want to waste the time to change this over every okay. time and do okay. it. You're better to just, just do it this way. And all you're doing is I'm a little back of center mm -hmm. and I'm a little lower on the end than I am okay. in the top that's all you got to do and then you just bring it in and depending on the size I mean if I'm doing a 30 thou or a 60 thou you know if I'm doing a big cutter I might do it like that but if you're doing a small one it's just touch until you hear it and then stop and measure so if I was trying to get this to a 60 50 is that right? Oh. 60 Oh, so I'd, okay. I'd line up on my 60 line there. And a little small. It's better to be small the first time than big because mm -hmm. if it's and too you got to regrind it back. back and start over. Another. So if it's under, sorry, if it's under, would you leave it? No, you just go back and. Oh, would this be more of a 55? This, this would good. probably be more like a 45. Oh, really? Yeah. If you want to know, just spin yeah. it to 45 and compare it to 55. So, you know, you look good at 55 to me. Yeah, it's probably, we're probably about half right. It's, it's just under 50. If you look at the 50 there, hold the tip flat against the line. 